If you're new to FPV, you're in for a treat. In this beginner's guide, we're gonna cover three key things that you need to know to get started with FPV. Simulators, tiny whoops, and your first drone. And this is the method that I used. If you're new to this channel, welcome. Consider subscribing for more drones, photography, and everything in between. And if you're a returning subscriber, I'm glad to have you back. Remember to hit that like button as it does help with the YouTube algorithm. So without further ado, let's begin. Before you jump into flying FPV, it's a good idea to practice in the simulator first. It's a great way to get comfortable with the controls and learn the basic principles of how an FPV drone flies without risking crashing your drone. There are a number of simulators available, but some of the more popular ones include Liftoff, Velocidrone, and DRL. These simulators are designed to be as realistic as possible and can be a lot of fun to play around with. This is the best way to enter the hobby without investing too much money. Depending on the simulator you choose, it will cost you around 20 US dollars or 20 pounds if you're in the UK. So the one I started out with was DRL, Drone Racing League. DRL has a very good training module learning all the basic principles and as you progress each module you will eventually get full control flying in manual mode. Now DRL is geared more towards FPV racing but there are various open worlds to practice in as free roam. More recently I've been using Tri FPV which has some cool features like chasing cars and bikes however the sim is still in development so it's not 100% perfect yet. It too has training and race modules which I have yet to test but maybe I can save this for a future video for my review. So far, it has been fun. Now, at the time I was learning, I was using the PS4 controller, and although it's doable, it's not ideal when the throttle is spring-loaded. Now, you could buy a cheap radio like the Beta FPV Lite for around $40 to $60, but then you might be left with a radio just for the sim and may not be able to use it with future quads you want to fly. This is the thing with FPV. There's a lot of research to do before you buy anything. Once you spend some time in the simulator, it's now time to start flying for real. A great way to get started without breaking the bank is to buy a Tiny Whoop RTF, which simply just stands for ready to fly. The Tiny Whoop is a small lightweight drone that's perfect for indoor flying. It's very durable and normally comes with guards so it can withstand crashes and won't break any of your mum's precious ornaments. A Tiny Whoop kit comes with everything you need to start flying, including the drone, a controller, batteries, and the charger. These kits are relatively affordable and a great way to get started with flying FPV. Some of the popular starter drones are Tiny Hawk S Freestyle, Beta FPV Cedus, and the Gep RC Tiny Go 4K. What I'll do is I'll link a video to a friend of mine, Thomas, who owns One Man Unmanned YouTube channel, where he's already done a comparison with these drones to help you make your decision. So the one I went with was with the Emacs Tiny Hawk Freestyle 3 and the whole kit set me back around 300 US dollars. The only thing extra that I purchased was some more batteries as it only came with one. And about five of these set me back around 22 US dollars. Remember the flight times with the Tiny Whoop are short, so I will leave it up to you with how many more batteries you want to buy. This was so much fun flying indoors and trying to make it through tables and chairs. I ended up making my own race circuit and you can check out that video up here. Although this is meant for indoors, you can fly it in a back garden if you want to stretch your wings a bit further. Just make sure not to fly on a windy day. Now the camera is not HD quality, but I was okay with that. It reminds me of the old VHS tapes I used to watch as a kid. Some of you, I guess, may not know what that is, which is cute. Anyway, the DVR footage has its charm if you're sharing it with social media. This drone was merely a stepping stone while I continue to do my research and plan for my next drone. This is probably the best time to start saving up while flying your tiny whoop and planning your next upgrade. Once you've gotten the hang of flying a tiny whoop, saved up some money and done your research, it's now time to move up to a more powerful drone. A Sub T50 drone is a great next step. These drones are relatively small and lightweight, but they are more powerful than a Tiny Whoop, so they can handle outdoor flying. There are a number of Sub 250 grams available, but some of the more popular ones include the Emacs Babyhawk 2 HD, 
the Gepar C Cinelog 25 and the iFlight Defender 25. Now these normally don't come with a complete kit, which is why it's important to do your research to know what system you want to fly, whether it's DJI, Crossfire or Express LRS, and there are various others, which will then determine which receiver and goggles to buy. Through popularity and simplicity, many choose DJI, but it is expensive. However, there are alternative options out there. Welcome to the world of FPV, where you're overwhelmed with options. At the end of the day, you make the decision what's right for you and what's within your budget. I actually bought two sub 250 gram drones. The first being the Emacs Baby Hawk 2 HD, which set me around $340. This was plug and play with DJI, and I paired this with the DJI Goggles V2 and the DJI FPV remote. This was so much fun to fly before I lost signal and it took a dive into the med. And you can watch the full story here. My second drone was the Gepar C Cinelog 25 with Crossfire, and this sent me back $370. Now at the time, I couldn't find a TBS Tango 2 Pro, but after some searching, I eventually found one. I like how this drone has these guards, and surprisingly, it can freestyle. Now this doesn't fly as long as the Baby Hawk 2. However, I bought this with the intention of flying indoors to grab those cool FPV one shots. Stay tuned for this in future. The most expensive part of this will be your camera. So depending which one you choose, whether you go for something higher quality like the GoPro or stick within the sub 250 gram limit and go for the Insta360 GO 2, this will be an added cost. You could opt for something like the newly updated Gepar C Synalog 20, which will come with the DJI 3 Air unit and you can use the, that camera to record your videos. And this will set you back $480. This is why I say do your research before you buy anything and make a list of the components you need to buy. For instance, you're going to need a charger, some LiPo batteries, some spare parts, and even a toolkit. And just remember when you get into FPV, you will crash, so get used to it. However, with all this said, I really do wish I was a teenager again. If I was at that age, this is all I would be doing. So start saving. That's it for today's video. If you already started, great. Let me know down below where you're at and what quad you're flying. Thanks very much for watching and remember to share this video with a friend who you know would be interested. And stay tuned for the next video where I'll share how much FPV costs to get started. For now, YouTube recommends you should watch this video next.